Hey everybody, this is the after show and uh, first off, happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Jam-packed show tonight as you heard and saw and uh, just want to say a big thank you to Aaron Free, Pastor Aaron Free, where we talked about what the Word says, what Scripture says about relationships, about marriage. And I got to tell you, those are the toughest segments for me to do. And I think it's because I have been given so much. I mean, I, I've been given the gift of my life and my wife and the kids. It, it is, it, and I, I just, I, I look at that and I think, Wow, how lost I was because I had to get to know him before I met my wife. And there's a, just, there's a fascinating story behind all that. And I'm not saying it's fascinating like a guy is sitting there going, hey, I've got some fascinating camp pictures to show you or the... Uh, summer vacation trip I had and we do it in slides and that's fascinating. No, it, it really, because it sounds unbelievable. At some point I'll tell that story again and, and you'll hear it because it it's extraordinary. And again, when I'm thinking about these issues and talking about these things and, and trying to communicate and seeing where I was, but not only that, where many people I know are and not understanding that, and not trusting God. Because if you don't take the time to get to know Him, are you trusting Him? And if I look back at that person years ago, still a disciple in progress as always, but I say, no, I was not trusting God. And I, I want this to be understood in, a, in, the, in my heart and the fact that it's a positive message. Because there's nothing more positive. I mean, it really isn't. It, it's amazing. And husbands who have the love of their life and their wives, and wives, husbands who are blessed with wives and wives who are blessed with husbands, you know what I'm talking about when it's through God. And it's awesome. And we don't hear a lot about that when we hear about marriage. We don't hear a lot about that when we talk about, well, before marriage and the importance of living biblically. Because we minimize the impact it has. And so we have a culture that tells us the exact opposite and celebrates reprehensible behavior. And that's not me looking down, pointing. That's me looking back and going, ah, oh, come on, man. Because it does have an impact. And it's important because we can tell the great story about what marriage is. And marriage isn't getting that play. It's all, I mean, not only do we have people trying to redefine it, but we are not living up to the covenant ourselves as Christians. So where do we hear about just how God was so giving and how much he blessed us with the institution? Okay, so we talked about that. Seized chocolate apparently is fantastic, and I look forward to tasting it, and I'll get back to you on that. I want to thank Aaron Free, Pastor Aaron Free, because that interview, once we got by the soup part, and you'll know that if you listen to the interview, which was my fault, was an opportunity for him to, he, he, he told a very personal story in his own experience. And we also addressed so many people who have been divorced. And as Aaron said, it's not the unforgivable sin. It's, it's, and he put it so well, I don't want to mess with it. But I will say that 
I've had the blessing of marrying the love of my life, and it is, there's nothing greater. There's just not. And guys, you know what I'm talking about? And women, you know what I'm talking about. Wives and husbands, you know. And if you do know, and that resonates with you, and you have friends who maybe are single or have been divorced, let them know that God loves them, cares for them, and has a plan for them as well. It's not over. Okay. Next, uh, in the next segment, we talked to Stephen Camerata, and I really was doing this for information because the limited time, I wanted to get as much information out there as we can have because when we talk about immigration, it goes to, don't you care about people who are obviously struggling and they didn't have the blessing of being born here, they're here, and sometimes not even their own circumstance, they were raised here and brought here by their parents, and so... Well, it, you know, it gets off what we need to talk about as a substantive core impact of what this would mean. And first and foremost, I think we really underestimate and disrespect the rule of law and how that is. A, you, you can't you can't just pull that one out and say, oh, it doesn't matter. We can get beyond that. We can we can ease it, we can change it, in essence, without destroying what you have. Another part to that is assimilation. We are not looking at ourselves as American anymore. We're going hyphens, Americans with hyphens, and that's hurting us because we're balkanizing and we're basing our rights and our power even within a government that is being used and manipulated by both sides for favors and special policies. No, we're equal under the law. And we will all not be equal when we finish. We're gonna finish at different places, but we'll be equal under the law. God has a plan, each and every one of us. And we also have a responsibility to live up to that. And sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. It's reality. And government can't change that. All it can do is limit and make everybody less by taking away and having, in essence, more government take away our liberty, our freedom. So that's what we talked about. Then we ended up with some minimum wage talk and just the, the destructive effect. Once again, well-meaning, I'm sure, but completely if we're going to be adults, let's look at the result, and that's what we have to do. Highlighted Marco Rubio's speech, and really took a, a much closer look at it overall, and I was I was impressed. There are parts I certainly, as I've mentioned, I, I wouldn't use the expression or, or play on the field of the president, but I really liked how he highlighted life. I like how he made his case, and I think it's absolutely absurd that we're talking about water. It's asinine. Um, so with that, I'm going to go because we're having our Valentine's Day dinner and I'm late. So, hey, live it on your life, bash your heart, keep the faith, and remember God knows you, he loves you, he has a plan for you, and he has a plan for me and I'm late for that plan. Thank you, Jesus, for the greatest gift in my life. Happy Valentine's Day to my wife, my daughter, my mother-in-law, and mom. Thanks.